Good morning. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on such a Sunday. A special Sunday for us. A Sunday in which we'll also have a baptism. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, amen, amen. So, Let's stand and call upon the Lord to fill this temple with his presence and with his love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for such a day in which we know that we can trust you and trust that you will do everything that you promised you will do. Fill this temple, O Lord, with your spirit and lead everything that will be done here for the blessing of your children. Speak to us through everything that we will see, everything that we will hear, everything that we will do, that all the glory will come to you through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so, let's read God's promises.
Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. The wicked in the haughtiness of his countenance does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Amen. They will walk and not be weary. That's the God we serve. Amen. Let's worship him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful morning to be able to worship this amazing God. Our great Father, our wonderful counselor, our friend in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. So this morning we will praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him in the wintertime, praise him in the summertime, praise him when the sun goes up, praise him when the sun goes down, praise him all year round, amen? And we'll worship him in spirit and truth. Trust him. Trust 
close to you and never let me go. That is our prayer this morning. It doesn't matter what you came in here with this morning. It doesn't matter what happened throughout the week. It doesn't matter how the year has been going so far, whether amazing or terrible. What we need is Jesus. We need our God to be with us. We need him every single day. We need to hear him say that I'm your friend. I walk with you in the good times and in the bad times. I will never let you go. That is our prayer this morning. So draw me, draw me close to you. No one else will do. No one else. 
As we prepare for baptism, we'll continue with the hymn, 
I've anchored in Jesus. to have as a candidate, Kwevon Majid. Kwevon has given himself to the Lord and has pledged to serve him. And it, we are excited to be able to baptize him in the name of our Father, Son and the Holy Ghost.
The second hymn requested is number 198, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Please feel free to stand and sing with us. Tis, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to us and if we ask in his name he will grant it to us so let's come to him and let's be those standing at the gap for our broken walls and let's bring our requests the requests of our families of our church communities country and even the world to God for we know that we can trust him 
to take care. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we stand at the gap right now on behalf of our brethren everywhere in the world struggling, struggling to find their ways. Lord, we know that in you we find peace. We've read in your word and even earlier when we read your promises, you said if we come to you, we'll find rest. You call on all of us, O oh Lord, to come to you to find peace, not to lean on our own understanding, not to trust in our wisdom, but to come to you. For you are a good God. You are wonderful. You are the Almighty, O oh Lord, and you are ready to work in ways that will blow our minds away. And so we call on you today, O oh Lord, lifting up our burdens to you. For we know that we'll find rest in you, O oh Lord. We thank you for the life of Wavon. We thank you for his baptism today. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for reminding him that this is just the sign of his proclamation of his faith to you. And that it is a calling to live according to what he pledged in Christ today. And through him, it is also a reminder to all those who have already been baptized that we have a pledge to hold up to. And we need your strength to be able to carry it out. And to those who are still yet to come, it is also just a reminder that it, the time is running and that they need to come to you and come fast. For today is the day of salvation. Lord, we pray for those who have celebrated birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for granting them the grace to see your power in their lives in ways that they couldn't imagine. For you are the one waking them up every morning when they go to bed, they just trust you. So we thank you for what you've been doing in the lives of your children, especially the Tanya family, who celebrated 11th year of marriage yesterday. Continue to work your ways in them. Continue to hold them close to each other <coughs> as they get closer to you. Lord, Bless their family and remind them that there is nothing that they cannot find in you. For you are the great I am. Lord, we pray for the Middle East with what started yesterday as those rain of drones over Israel from Iran and then Lebanon. Lord, we know that when you look, you wonder what is going on. But we trust, O oh Lord, that as you said in your word, out of the ashes, you can bring streams of waters. And so, O oh Lord, no matter what is going on, no matter how people may react, we trust you to bring your will to pass in the Middle East. And Lord, we pray for the protection of your people. We pray, O oh Lord, that <coughs> those who trust in you will never lack to be protected by you. And Lord, we pray that the world 
will just rest in the wisdom of your word, knowing <coughs> that what you say will always come to pass. And Lord, that's why we pray for the leaders of the world. Those who are gathered right now to talk about what happened yesterday and to project the future that they don't even know for you are the one holding the future. We pray that your wisdom will guide our world. And Lord, we thank you already for we know that nothing evil will befall your children. We lift up all those struggling with health issues to you right now. Touch them. Touch them in a very special way, O oh Lord. We lift up Sister Catherine to you. We thank you for what you have done already in her life. For we rejoice in what has been done. And we plead for your grace and favor to continue to overflow over her. And we rejoice with Sister Bonnie for what you've done, and she's among us. So we praise you, O oh Lord. We thank you for what you are doing in the life of Sister Brenda. As during the week, we were even frightened, but we are seeing her right here. So to you all the glory. We want you to finish what you've started, the healing process, and through them, Touch your people, O oh Lord, and speak to us that we may continue to lift your name high in praise through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, I guess I'm not Joel, because when he does that, the church says it louder. So, before we go through our... Yes, let's pray for Sister Sharon and her mother. Yeah. And she's standing also for her mother. We know that God loves his people. And we know that no matter what is going on, we can bring our request to him, right? God is faithful. And so let's pray and trust God to do what he promised. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we trust in your word, saying to us that by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, we thank you for it is in your arms that we entrust her family. We thank you for what you've done already in the life and health of her mother. And we know, O oh Lord, that what you start, you never stop in the middle. You always accomplish your word. So we want you to bring peace in the heart of your servant and to uphold our mother in your mighty arms to heal her and to bring her back here that we may rejoice together in testimonies of praise to you for you always do things that will bring glory to your name and blessing to your children that's why O oh lord we thank you already for what by faith we see through christ jesus our lord and savior amen Praise the Lord. So, Sister Brenda has something. Brother Dave has something to tell us too. So, let's start maybe with Sister Brenda. Okay, <laughs> now you can. Amen. I just want to thank everyone that tri contributed to our toy drive. We have uh, lots of new shiny toys. I bring them in a little each week because I don't want the kids to think Santa Claus has arrived. <laughs> so I've been bringing them in a little at a time and uh, they really have been enjoying them. 
Also, I like to remind everyone, anytime you give money, either cash, check, whatever, uh, like I had gotten a lot directly given to me, I kept track of it, and Brenda West has a um, list of what who gave what. So it's on your tithing card. So anytime you give to for anything, uh, there's a there, you know there we keep track of it so you can have it for your tithing card. Also now, um, like when every time you see me, I'm asking for money. Uh, it's time we're starting. Uh, Sandra and I went out last week, uh, checking out uh, when the book bags would be available for the back to school drive, and uh, it'll be later in the summer. And they're not even out of school yet, but. Uh, we try to get ahead of this because we had last year I think we had 350 book bags. Is that right, Sandra? Something like that. Uh, they they're going to be much more expensive because the high schools are required to have the, the C series. They're about two or three times more than what we were paying before. So we're starting early to ask for uh, contributions uh, and try to get ahead of ourselves so we'll be able to uh, have a nice contribution to help the kids get them back to school. And I don't know, sure if we have a date yet on that, but um, do you have anything else I need to say, Sandra? No? How about Bill Ed? I covered it, okay. <coughs> Praise yeah. the Lord. Brother Dave? I came up here and Brenda says, what are you doing up here? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I didn't organize anything, I just attended. But the event Friday night was really excellent. It was a yam career night, and I showed up expecting to have to talk about how I became a scientist or how I became a veterinarian, but I didn't have to say a word. <laughs> All I did was sit and listen, and the speaker was a person from uh, Ralph's firm, international CPA firm, and he also had a PhD, so you would have expected the talk to be very boring and stale, but uh, it was really excellent, very interactive, and uh, tremendous content. It had to do with uh, dealing with people in the workforce and motivating them and how you are able to point out their shortcomings and yet still maintain a positive result and not offend them and to motivate them to really have a passion for excellence. and. Uh, it was amazing, the content, it was kind of a humanistic type of talk, and yet virtually almost everything that was said was very scripturally sound, very Christian advice of how to deal with people and how to motivate them to really care and uh, produce and uh, deal with their colleagues and with their boss and do a good job. And uh, this is something that's very relevant to us in the church, helping each other to become more strongly motivated and uh, do the things that please the Lord to show our appreciation for what he did for us. And so it was a very scripturally sound time that uh, this YAM event provided. You know, we think of YAM as the future of the church. Well, YAM is not the future of the church. YAM is the church. And for those of us like Brenda and I who are approaching 80 and can barely stand up, <coughs> we got to think young and feel young and be active. And uh, all of us need to be participants in YAM, attend the YAM events and support them and profit from their events. And uh, it will result in tremendous church growth and the realization of the kind of goals that I know the Lord has for each of us as members of this body of Christ. Praise the Lord. God is good. And they were, we were 19 at that event. So it is increasing. So the next one, I believe, will beat that, right? Yes, and they have an event coming. But before talking about that, I would like to welcome everyone. Thank you very much for choosing to worship with us today. We are grateful that you chose to be here. And we pray that God will continue to pour his blessings upon you all. And that you will receive those blessings with grateful hearts. Amen. And so, staying with the YAM, they have an event coming on the 26th at 730 
a yam night, and we are all invited. Invite your children to come, your friends, your everybody, and especially those who are in schools. Come and be blessed. Amen? Praise the Lord. And so today we have a special event after service. The women of power will meet upstairs and the men downstairs. Amen? So please, after service, don't go home. Stay, fellowship, and participate for the blessing of our ministries. We are very blessed by the Lord every Wednesday at 7.30. Bible study, it's truly a community Bible experience. We've learned a lot from Nehemiah's experiences, what he did, a leader that got things done, a leader that displayed integrity, and that brought revival in the people of Israel in his time. And God is counting on us to replicate it in our time. It is a challenge for us. It is a challenge for each of us to do and bring forth revival among our communities and cities, countries, and the world. For God is ready to do great things with us. Amen? And so come on Wednesday at 7.30 and participate. We are starting a new book on Wednesday. God will continue to bless us, and we trust that he will bless all those who are coming. And if you can't come, you can still participate via Zoom. Amen? And we are also calling on all of you to give your talents to the Lord. We have different ministries. You can plug into ministries, and we have Ministries that are not yet open, that you can open. Because God is counting on you to use your gifts and talents. And on Thursday, we meet here for praise and worship rehearsals. And we are open. We are waiting for you to come and do your part so that we can lift up our Lord on Sunday services and on other special services. Amen? We have on Saturdays at 1, the hour, the street hour of prayer conference line. And we want everybody to participate. We bring all our requests to God. And God faithfully answers. We are grateful to see various answers to our prayers. We can testify about the presence of our sister, Bonnie here, Sister Brenda, God is doing great things. So just fellowship together on Saturdays. Use the prayer line. And if you can't, still send your prayer requests. We will lift them up to God. And God said he will answer them. Amen. Now you have in your bulletin this special leaflet, right? And so, it is the Women's Spring Tea from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Come, enjoy, fellowship, be a blessing, and become blessed as well. Amen? It is on the 20th. And the 20th is Saturday. Jason's birthday. <laughs> so come and fellowship. Come and be blessed. Next Saturday at 2 p.m. Amen. And the men will be serving the ladies. <laughs> A blessing in our church. Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. I would like...
to remind us of a very important meeting that our church will have on May the 4th. That is a Saturday, our local church conference. It is a very important gathering that we'll have. And during that time, we will seek the face of the Lord and the will of God for our church and for our church's leadership. So we are calling on everyone to already pray and dedicate that time to the Lord and ask God to reveal his will that those he wants to lead his church will be the one we receive. Amen? God is good. And then, in May, we'll have different events. The Yam Barbecue on May 18th at Brother Abel's house. And Yam Night also on the 24th. But before that, we'll have the Communion Sunday, right the day after our local church conference. Amen? We'll receive the bread of life, eh, Brother Dave, <laughs> that we studied during Sunday school this morning. So every Sunday, we start with Sunday school at 10 a.m., a time in which we yearn after God's word and God's wisdom to understand his word and to grow spiritually. And thereafter, we come up for our Sunday worship service. And it is time to worship God with our tithes and offerings. Worshiping God with what we are offering. Amen? Worship God with your tithes, offerings, through PayPal, PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, Cash, Checks. God receives it all. And he blesses and uses it for the glory of Christ Jesus in our midst. Amen? So let's stand up and fellowship and worship God through our giving. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you give us. And now that we are about to give back to you some of it, bless it already and use it to yourself, to your glory and to the blessings of this ministry. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Nothing that we desire com compared to Jesus. Amen. 
Because he's more precious than silver. He's more costly than gold. And he's definitely more beautiful than diamonds. Nothing in this world we can take and compare to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 8, and it says, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You know, whenever we gather on a Sunday morning to worship God together with one voice, it's only practice for when we get to heaven, when forever we're going to sing holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty. This song is holy forever, and Miss Hannah is going to join me today in worship to God. Your highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry. creation cry holy you are lifted high holy holy forever if you've been forgiven and if you've been redeemed sing the song
is holy, holy, holy forever. Amen. Amen. We are grateful to God for all that he continues to do for us. And it's a privilege to stand again, again and to share his word. Um, God has been wonderful. God is wonderful. God will be wonderful. In spite of all that's going on, in spite of all fears and the anxieties that present themselves, our God knows how to deal with it. Fear ye not. God is with us. Today I want to address you <coughs> from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, and the passage we're dealing with begins at verse 14, and I don't know what made Pastor Jews preach what he preached the last week, and I don't know who whispered in his ear. But you see, God has a way of confirming his word. And I did not share with him what we are going to share today, but God has a way of getting to us. So I am praying that God's will would be done today as we share. So let's stand together and read the passage of Scripture, Revelation chapter 3. And we begin to read at verse 14. Read together, please. Do they? These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would though were cold or hot. So because thou art not and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counseled you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve the, on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit with me on my throne. And sat down with my father. Amen. Father, we 
pray your Holy Spirit would minister to us, your people. May your word find root in our hearts. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I want to focus on verse 20 of this passage of scripture, one which I am sure we are very familiar with. And I read it from the, pass from the translation we are looking at. It says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Many years ago, I was visiting a former, one of our former pastors. And as you enter what we will call the side door um, into the, the dining room, there was this picture. It's a picture of an artist's impression of Jesus standing outside of a closed door and knocking. I believe you have seen this picture somewhere before. But every time I hear this passage of scripture, where I read it or hear it, I am reminded of that picture. Jesus standing the outside of a closed door, knocking and asking to come in. One of the issues I take is with this picture is the application or the constant application of this verse. We often think of this verse as a picture of Jesus standing outside addressing an unbeliever. And he's saying, open your heart so I can come in. So that for most of us, we, this is the picture that we get. That this word is a word to the unbeliever. The problem is, this verse isn't addressed to unbelievers. It's addressed to Christians. More specifically, it is addressed to a church. And as is seen as an invitation to open a closed door. We get the picture that Christ is inviting this particular church, the church at Laodicea, to let him in. So the thought comes to mind, why, why is Jesus standing outside of the door of his church? He 
if you can stretch your imagination a little bit, think of you going home to your house and the doors are locked and your key no longer works. You know that the rest of the family are in there. You know they're there. Perhaps sleeping, perhaps whatever. But you, the owner of the house, you the one who pay the mortgage when the month come, but you cannot get in. So you are on the outside and you are knocking. And you are knocking and nobody is opening the door. This is a situation that Christ, the owner of the church, the one who gave himself for the church, the one who is the foundation, the very foundation of the church, is standing on the outside. I I have titled this word today, An Intimate Invitation. And as we look at the passage, I want you first to understand that this is an invitation from the Lord of the Church. Verse 14 says, refers to him as the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. In the first few chapters of Revelation, as you know, John is here writing letters. Well, some person refer to them as little epistles. But John is here recording messages from God to seven churches. These letters are being transcribed by John, but there are words from Christ himself. There are few places outside of the Gospels where we find the actual words of Jesus. Saul's encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus is one of those ex expressions, one of those readings. But here in the, chat, the first few chapters of Revelation, we find a very extensive rendering of Christ's words. And these are addressed to the church. It is important to note the context from which Jesus speaks to these seven churches. Chapter 1 introduces us to the symbolic and the, and the visionary language of the book by depicting Jesus as with flaming eyes and bronze feet. A Jesus who is walking in the midst of seven golden lampstands, which is simply symbolic of Christ's present presence and his oversight over these churches. 
Here in verse 14 of our passage, Christ is described first as the Amen. Here Christ is introducing himself as the one who tells the truth. The Amen. The idea is that he is the one who sanctions or who signs that which is true. So as he, he, the, 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 the one who is standing on the outside is truth, is the amen, the agent of truth, you get the picture that what's going on in the, on the inside is likely not the truth. And that's sad. The next description is the faithful and true witness. And here Christ goes on to elaborate on his claim by claiming to be the faithful and true witness. In other words, he's not only, he not only tells the truth, but he tells all of the truth. He does not hide anything. There is a third expression. It says, the beginning of the creation of God. It is the same word that the Gospel of St. John opens with. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Two verses later in the same chapter, John says, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made. Here, Jesus is introducing himself as the origin, the beginning of God's creation. So as you, you look at this, this scenario, the one standing on the outside is the truth. He himself says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am light. He is also not only the truth, but the entire truth. Which means that everything else apart from him is not the truth. He also introduces himself as the true creation, as the, the one without whom nothing is created. So that whatever is built, whatever foundation it is built upon, whoever mouth it comes out of, it is very often not of God. And this was the one who stood outside of this church seeking interest. I wonder, as one poet would say, I wonder what the reception would be if Christ came to your church. If Christ came to your house, 
I wonder what the reception would be. Would he be invited in? Would he be welcomed in? Or would he be standing on the outside, knocking, seeking entrance? Christ is a, a wonderfully gracious God. Could he have broken down the door? Oh, yeah. Could he have ripped the door off? Oh, yes. But here is the gracious God. The builder of the church, the foundation of the church, he in his humble spirit stands and he waits for you to offer him the invitation. You see, God does not force himself on any man or woman. God has given us the, the ability to make that decision for ourselves. And it is you and I who decide that God will be allowed in or he will stay outside. And nothing happens. So the message, the invitation is one from God, from the Father, the Lord of the church. The invitation is, let me in. Let me in so I can help you to perfect the truth to present the truth. Help me in so I can help you to present not only the truth, but all of the truth. Let me in because without me, all that you are doing, all that you might be building up is going to fall apart one day because I am the author of creation. I know how to build. I know how to get it done. And without me, nothing is ever going to happen. Let me in, please. This is the God who sends this letter. He is a God who loves you. Verse 18, he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so you can become rich. And we think we have it all. We think we are, bo uh, are bold enough, and some of us are bold enough to say, I don't need anything. But God is here saying to us, understand that you are not as rich as you think you are. Understand that you are not as well clothed as you think you are. So Christ says, knocking. He says, I want to cover you so that your shameful nakedness would not be revealed. And I want to put salve on your eyes so that you will see better, so that you will have good eyesight. The God of love, the Lord of the church, the foundation of the church, says, let me in. 
He says in verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So don't take this as God willing to flog you or God willing to spank you or smack you. He is a God who looks over his people and understand who they are and his heart still goes after them because he loves us all. He says in verse 20, I am standing at the door and I am knocking. If you will let me in, I am willing to have fellowship with you. I will eat with you and you will eat with me. And we wonder at times why our fellowship is not as it ought to. It's because God, who is the author of fellowship, is not with us. So the message is from God, Christ, the Lord of the church, the Amen, the, God, the head of God's creation. But there was a little more in this invitation. It is a message from God. It is a invitation to his church. Specifically, it's to the church of the Laodiceans. But it is a message to God's church, the church of 2004. He, it, it is the message, it's the invitation to us here and to all of us who are called by the name of Christ wherever we are. In the few chapters of Revelation, as I said earlier, John records these messages, but it is a message from God himself to these seven churches. These are real churches that existed in John's day. And that's not to say that there isn't any value in them. What you will see when you read <coughs> about these seven churches is that they look and behave so much like the church of today. So, the message that Christ brought to the church at Laodicea is one that is very applicable to churches of our day. So the famous picture of Jesus standing at the door knocking comes in the middle of one of these addresses. Open the door. Allow me to come in. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a message to the church. And God is seeking interest into the church. It is about how we as believers can become lukewarm and feel like this church did, that we are self-sufficient. In doing so, we push Christ outside and leave him out there standing and knocking. That's the picture that the verse, verse 20 presents. That is the 
intention of the artist's impression of Jesus standing outside the door and seeking entrance. The church at Laodicea was positioned in a heavily resource, heavily in a resourceful area. Very resourceful. They had everything they wanted, anything that they could think of. They lived comfortable lives. And as a result, they became very full of pride in their ability to provide for themselves. They became arrogant. We don't need you. We can make it on our own. There's nothing that you have that we want. They become very boastful. This attitude of self-sufficiency spilled over into the church. And they too thought that they were good enough. They had it all together. They figured that we have it all. We have money, we have other resources, we have so many things going on. We got it made. And it is this kind of an attitude that forced them to push Christ outside of the church. They felt that they had it all. They were self-sufficient, strong. But you know, this is what the whole lukewarm story is all about. The city of Laodicea was in a position on one side where there was the water coming down, the ice water coming down out of the mountains, and where people enjoy cool, fresh water to drink. On the other hand, there was the heat and the water that came down was hot, very warm, very hot. So the cold water and the hot water came together right in the center of Laodicea. So they were not hot. Neither were they cold. They were lukewarm. My wife gets <laughs> not annoyed, but she chides me about it. I don't like cold. I don't like lukewarm stuff. If it is to be hot, let it be hot. And if it's to be cold, let it be cold. If it is in between, it's no wonder the Lord of the church wanted to spit these people out. You know. But that was the situation that existed. This church had reached a point where they had become arrogant because of their self-sufficiency. They had become lukewarm. They had become friendless. They had become a people that were not good company anymore. They had become a people who had tossed Christ, as it were, outside of the church. And as I said earlier, 
This is a picture of the modern day church. We have money. We have resources. We have people who are intelligent. We have people who know how to get things done. And because we have reached this stage, we tend to ignore those, the very important things that we need. So we have gotten into the habit of doing what we want. We have gotten into the habit of pleasing ourselves. No longer do we have to pray and beg God to come and supply our needs. We got it made, God. You, you relax. No longer do we have to pray and ask God to guide us. God, we got architects here. And God, we, we, we got other people with other skills here. You relax, God. We got this. So we have reached the stage where we, we no longer want to depend. We no longer depend upon God because we got it made. And God is outside of the church. There is something else about this invitation. It is an invitation from God, an invitation to the church. It is an invitation for intimacy, for life. The word says in our text, if anyone would open the door and allow me to come in, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. This gives the idea of fellowship. It gives the idea of communion, communication, Comfort, life. If I were to invite you to my house for dinner and I prepare this dinner and then you didn't turn up, I would be very disappointed. You better don't do it. <laughs> Unless... Uh, so unless you, you're going to crawl up in a hole somewhere and die, I'm going to come after you. <laughs> Not really. But that, that's, that's a picture that we're given. God has made all available to us. And he says, I am the way, I am truth, I am life. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, nothing is going to happen. I am the way. I am the foundation. I am the source. And I want to have this intimate relationship with you. The image of Jesus standing at the door it's a picture that probably would become famous. It is an image of someone wanting to come in to dinner, come in to have fellowship, come in so we can sit down and have a chat, you know, drink a cool a cold glass of lemonade or whatever else you drink. But Christ is here seeking intimacy with each of us. It is allowing him to do work in us, in our lives. It means 
that we are giving him the permission to begin the process of transformation in our lives. So you are saying to God, I acknowledge my folly. I acknowledge my weakness. I acknowledge my nakedness. I acknowledge my blindness. I cannot do anything without you. So, God, come on in. Let's have fellowship together. I know that this transforming process is not always the easiest. It is very often painful because we human beings, we do not like to change. We do not like to turn from the bad and go to the good. It becomes hard for many of us. But God is here saying, I am giving you every opportunity to make good on your transformation. This is why you ought to let him in. It is giving him permission to dig around in your lives. You understand that expression. To dig around in your lives. And as he does so, he will find the dead things and toss them out. As he does so, he will find the bad things and toss them out. As he does so, he will find the selfishness. He will find the friendlessness. He will find the things that are conflicting to his way of life. And he will toss them out. And you might hurt, but it is all for our good. My mom loved a whip. <laughs> and she knew how to use it. But you know what she used to say? If I didn't love you, I wouldn't even say a word to you. Yeah, but I'm the one feeling the pain. But it is okay. It, it, it is because God loves us. He says, whom I love, whom I gave myself for, I will chastise. I will whip you every now and again. When you start playing the fool, I will smack you. And this is all because he loves us. The invitation is an invitation to intimacy. The question is, how will we respond? The question is, would we remain in this state of foolishness? Will we remain in this state of untruthfulness? Will we remain in this state of arrogance? Will we remain in this state of selfishness and unfriendliness? Or will we allow God to come in and clean us up? Would we allow him to come in and start the process of transforming, of transforming us, making us in to what we ought to be. My prayer for my own church is that God would draw near to each of us that God would speak words of peace and love and comfort to each of us, and that each member 
would open the door to Christ so that our church can be what he wants us to be. He wants us to be a loving church, a strong church, a friendly church, a beautiful church. And this can only happen when we throw open the door and allow him to come in. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, in the quietness of these moments, O oh God, speak to the hearts of your people. Show them that you are interested in them. Show them that you love. Show them that you care. God, give us the courage to open the door and allow you to come in. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I do not ask you to come to an altar. I do not ask you to leave where you are. I pray and I ask you to examine yourself and see if you are allowing God to stand on the outside of your heart. Because if he comes into every heart, he is in our church. Allow him to come in and do it soon. God bless you. of the load of your sin, let Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubtings give o'er. Just now reject him no more. Just now throw open the door. Let Jesus come into your heart. Amen. your sin, that Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubt is give o'er, just now reject him no more. Just now throw open the door, let Jesus come into your heart. It is for purity now that you sigh, let Jesus come into your heart. Fountains for cleansing are flowing nearby, let Jesus come into your heart. Just now your doubt is give o'er, just now reject him no more, just now throw open the door, let Jesus come into your heart. If there's a tempest, 
your voice cannot still Let Jesus come into your heart If there's a void that the never can fill Let Jesus come into your heart Oh, just now your doubtings give on Just now reject Him no more If you would join the blood songs of the blessed, let Jesus come into your heart. If, if you would, would enter a mansion of rest, let Jesus come into your heart. Oh, just now your doubtings be born. Just now reject him no more. Just now throw open. Just now, just now, your doubtings give up. Oh, just now, reject him no more. Just now, throw open the door. Let Jesus come into your heart. from the Lord, an invitation to the church, to you, to me, an invitation to intimacy and life with God. Let's open our hearts, let's open our church, let's open our homes, our cities, and let the Lord of hosts come in Cleanse it and bless it. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lead us to obey you and to do according to your will and your plans. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Jesus is